What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email that's right here. But today I'm going to hit you up with my thoughts and opinions on this new collaboration project from Freddie Gibbs and Madlib called Bandana. This one was long awaited and it's a follow up to Pinata. That one was critically acclaimed and I really don't hear much of any negativity about it. And even when you look at their solo work, they've both done really well for themselves. I'd say that their catalogs speak for themselves, so I don't have to break it down too much. But Madlib, he's coming out of California and is one of the best sample choppers in the hip hop game right now. He has been actually for many years. And Freddie Gibbs is coming out of Gary, Indiana as one of the most consistent rappers within the past decade, if you ask me. I think if you look at his collection of albums, tapes, and even some of his other collaboration projects, he's really been very consistent and done quite well. So out of all the rappers who have kind of been active within the past five to ten years, the newer ones, I think he would definitely be high up on my list because I like pretty much everything that he's dropped. So saying all that, I was really excited to hear what this project was going to bring because I expected it to be just as dope as Pinata, maybe even better. And I gotta say that I like this one about the same as Pinata at this point, which is obviously a really good thing. So leading up to this, we got some great singles. I really liked Flat Tummy T with that black exploitation production, and there were quotables all over that song and all over this album. So you guys are gonna have to bear with me as I break down some of my favorite bars. On Flat Tummy T, he spits, without a cosign, you'd probably be filling my grocery bag. So that there is him speaking on the state of the rap game right now, where we're seeing artists get these cosigns and get put on when they don't even have the skill. I thought those lines were great, and I also got to shout out where this title comes from because he has a line on the hook where he says that he's all up in these bitches stomach like flat tummy T and it's actually kind of funny because if you go on genius he annotated a bunch of bars on that song and on that one he was saying that flat tummy T actually does work because it gives you the shits gives you diarrhea empties out everything inside of you so it does help you lose weight in that way but man you're just gonna be shitting all over yourself so I don't know if it's worth it but that was a good single then we also got Giannis this featured Anderson Pack sounding better with his bars than he has since Malibu I would say I think he really had a good performance on here and he also brought some vocals too and of course we have more fun references on here as Gibbs is making a reference to back when Ace Hood's Rolex fell apart at some red carpet event I forget where it was but that was very embarrassing and my favorite favorite single though, out of all these ones that we did get, and one of my favorite songs on the album and of the year, has got to be Crime Pays. I absolutely love this beat, it's very smooth and it sounds like something from out of the 70s, like it would be on a PBS commercial back then or some shit, I don't know why, that's just what it reminds me of. And yet you're getting this contrast because Gibbs is coming through spitting some really grimy and gritty shit, there's one point where he's rapping about someone he knows who had sex with this girl who had AIDS and now he's thinking did he get with this girl too, he's just living that fast life, some of the shit that he's got going on and he's ripping some really crazy flows on this song too I especially like when he picks up the pace on that second verse and there are some shots at Jeezy as well so Freddie Gibbs is not pulling any punches on this he is being very honest hitting you with that gangster shit that you would expect and Mad Lib is killing these damn beats man there are so many great moments with the beats whether you want to talk about on cataracts where we get this very smooth beat switch up then on fake names we get a slick bass line and woodwinds that come into play later on in the track and on half man half cocaine the beat goes from hard to even harder like you're browsing porno at 2 in the morning and you're on like page 36 man the shit just gets harder than you thought it would so there are great beats all over this project, great bars all over it as well, and that makes it one of those albums that is hard to break down, because no matter how much I talk about it, I feel like I'm going to leave something out or miss something. So if I do that, feel free to leave it down below in the comments section so we can speak on it. But some of the other moments on here I really like, come on massage seats, we're getting a clever DMX line when he spits, I've been water whipping Earl Simmons, all my dogs eat. And I also like when Gibbs was making his stance on hip hop very clear when he raps, this ain't for soccer mamas, this is for the underground, niggas was the shit last summer, and now they numbers down. So there are plenty of memorable bars all over this damn thing, tons of quotables, great flows and cadence switch ups, you're also getting the vivid street stories, narrative, coke raps that you would expect from Gibbs, really just a solid outing from him and easily some of his best work man. I would put this right up there with Pinata, I know it's kind of soon to say that but I really do enjoy this one pretty much just as much as that, which I didn't actually review Pinata because I think I was on hiatus during that time but that was damn good so this one is right up there just to let you know how I feel about that. But to move on to some of the other songs, we're just going all over the place here, I liked freestyle shit 
We're getting some crackly horn and vocal samples on here as he works some sing-songy flows and reflects on when he was kind of stuck between the music game and the dope game. He raps, because when this music shit wasn't moving, man, I said I might as well be moving things. And this track also references a track that Isaiah Rashad referenced on the Sun's tirade. I'm talking about that Silk the Shocker song featuring Master P and Fiend called If I Don't Gotta. And I know we give Silk the Shocker a lot of shit for his flows. Like, I would never defend his flows, man. I know they're kind of crazy and all over the damn place. But that album, Charge It To The Game, that has some hard-ass songs on it, man. I don't care. There are tracks on that that I actually like. And that was definitely one of the best ones on there, If I Don't Gotta. So, the reference is when Freddie Gibbs spits, My weed habit so close to snorting powder, Niggas don't holla, less I got narcotics. That was from, I think, the hook on that song, on that Silk song. So, that was a pretty cool reference, man. And as much as Gibbs is coming through with that ignorant shit and that crime rap that we love, there are also moments where he does get a little bit more personal and emotional, just giving us more perspectives and giving us some insight into how he's feeling. Like, on the song Practice, this one has Mad Lib coming through with a gorgeous soul flip, and Gibbs is on here just rapping about his struggles with infidelity and trying to get out of the street life. And on Soul Right, he's trying to get his soul right in spite of all the shit that he's been through. He speaks on some struggles that he's gone through, and he says, I can't hold no grudge my hands is too busy catching blessings so there is a nice variety of content here it's not just like boring gangster rap by any means he gets very vivid and believable with it he does put some emotions into these songs as well and you're also going to pick up on some themes of black empowerment and excellence as you listen through there was even a part on one song i'm just remembering it now where he was saying something about smacking white jesus up because it's bullshit or something like that so gibbs is going to hit you with all kinds of shit on this project and i don't feel like he's wasting many bars or verses at all on this thing man he really was going hard so on top of all these things as I scroll down here we got to talk about his ability to switch up flows and style I actually mentioned that very briefly with his cadences and I think one of the best instances of that comes on the song situations we're getting some serious bone thugs vibes here with the production style and even how he is working those sing-songy flows and he references their song days of our lives when he refers to himself as a smoking lethal warrior myself I love it when Freddie Gibbs comes on that smooth melody Hello shit, there's something about that crackly voice he's singing in that just works. Not gonna sit here and say he's belting out crazy notes, but the shit is catchy, something you can definitely sing along with. And you are gonna get more of that on some of these other songs, like on Gat Damn. So if you like that wavy shit from Gibbs, you're definitely gonna like these couple of tracks because that's what he's doing. But to come back to situations right quick, I like the theme of this song because he's rapping about all the shitty situations he's been in, including one story he's telling about seeing someone getting stabbed in the neck while he was just a young and trying to play. Pac-Man and Centipede at the arcade so he has been through some things he's speaking on how these things have affected him how it kind of led him into the path that he went down getting into the game and all that shit so things are very vivid here that's a word I said a couple times vivid but I like that word because it works for what it is man he really is letting you know what's going on but of course I can't finish this review without talking about some of the great features on here. I already mentioned Anderson Pack on Giannis, thought that was a great track. And on Palm Olive we get Killer Mike, who only delivers a hook. It's a good hook, but I would have loved a verse. And Pusha T coming on here snapping and fitting in perfectly with the grimy shit that Freddie Gibbs raps about. So he brings up how Obama opened the White House doors and let him in despite his criminal past. And one of my favorite bars on the album and on this song is when Pusha T spits, take over your blocks, young niggas assimilate we all break bread like going dutch on a dinner date i thought that was just a hard ass line and it was damn sure better by the way than when freddie gibbs was rapping about fuck your poison keep your vaccines off of us look man he still snapped on this verse the rest of it is good because he's getting into some political content and he starts it off hard as hell just by rapping about smashing the preacher's daughter while he's wearing two jesus pieces but please man for the love of god PSA, vaccinate your damn kids, man, okay? Don't kill our kids, don't kill the rest of us, get your shit vaccinated. But to move on from talking about vaccines and the whole anti-vax movement, which is a whole other topic, we got to shout out also the great verses from Black Thought and Yasin Bey, aka Most Deaf on Education. I think this is the best that I've heard Yasin Bey sound in a long time. Of course, Black Thought was snapping on this as well, and Freddie Gibbs held it down. But there's an issue with this song that I know some of you are tired of hearing me talk about. You probably already knew when you're going to watch this review that I was going to say it. But this lo-fi mixing on this shit, man. I like the bars. I like the beat. 
but I gotta make this my least favorite because it sounds like it was recorded in a goddamn Tupperware container, man. Like a giant Tupperware container. They just walked in or they recorded the shit underwater because the vocals are just very muffled, especially on that first verse from Yasin Bay. I just, I don't know, man. I would have preferred to have this with proper mixing. But to be fair, like, there are some rough mixing choices throughout this project. It does have a very raw feel to it. You can hear the crackling samples and stuff. And I didn't mind all that. It actually does add a bit of character and charm to the project because it is so gritty and it is kind of in that more traditional hip-hop sound which would have sort of that raw effect and that crackly noise so I didn't mind that shit but this song in particular I just thought the mixing on it was really awful but if you don't mind that you're probably still gonna love it but that's what made it my least favorite other than that though man this is a damn good album I'm gonna go with a 4.5 out of 5 and this is very highly up there in the running for my album of the year man I think right now for 4.5s I have this one uh, Little Sims with Grey Area and also Quelle Chris with Guns so I mean those are three very different projects that I just really love but this is some of the best gangster rap that I have heard in a long time great beats great bars plenty of content a lot of variety and yeah like I said man Freddie Gibbs has been damn consistent since he entered into the rap game I love some of those early mixtapes like I said some of his collaboration projects like Fetty with Currency that was good his albums were good I like Shadow of a Doubt I could go on and on I'm not going to I just think He's one of the best out right now. He's holding it down. He's consistent. And I look forward to what he's going to do next. But I'm going to be enjoying this shit for a long time. So top quality gangsta music. Gangsta music is in good hands with artists like him and especially Benny the Butcher with that Tana Talk 3 that I loved. Even the plugs I met, that EP he put out. But now I'm just rambling because I'm excited. I love this project and I want to go listen to it. So I'm going to go do that. But you guys hit me up in the comments section. Let me know what you think about this. How do you like it in regards to some of his other tapes and albums, collaborations, whatever? Let me know, man. Of course, you want to make sure you show me love and you show me lots of it. Do all that good YouTube and social media stuff. I'm all over the damn place. But that's how it is, man, because it's late at night, and I'm kind of tired. I'm going to go listen to some bandana, maybe play some Tales of Vesperia on my Switch, man. I'm getting close to wrapping that up, so that's what it's going to be. But thank you for watching, everybody, and I will see you next time.